Okay, so as I said, we are home now, but to get home, we had a bit of a horror story, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, um, we did. Um, so, nearly didn't make it on the plane, uh, and it wasn't our own fault, the whole situation, uh, but it was an absolute... <laughs> It was well, honestly it was a whirlwind at like 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> it was the worst thing. I've never seen Connor sweat so much in my life. <laughs> so our flight was Sunday morning, um, I think it was 5 a.m. and the ordeal started uh, Friday evening. So Friday evening we had a really busy day of work. Um, and I actually partly blame Lewis for the whole issue <laughs> because Lewis was over at us and Lewis when he was leaving, he got his um, COVID test done and he said it was the easiest thing ever, <laughs> so straightforward, he just got it done. So I, I like felt like I didn't have to worry about it. So like Thursday was coming, I was like, ah, that's grand, like Lewis said it's grand. <laughs> Friday came and then I was like, it was Friday night and we were planning to go out that night uh, with our friends and it was like half, half six or something, finishing up on the laptop and I was like, Kate, we don't have our COVID test done. And we're like, oh shit. It was the worst thing. I honestly am not joking. Like, I was like, what the hell? And we were still working. We were meeting friends that night. And I was like, what are we actually going to do now? So I started frantic ringing. <laughs> it yeah. was so bad. Yeah, so we ran the clinics. <laughs> um, they weren't doing any walk-ins at the moment. Only drive, um, drive-through clinics, which I didn't even know our thing. Uh, we didn't have a car. So we were like, what do we do? Do we get like an Uber to go through it? That wouldn't even make sense because... Where do you say you're going to? Um, a taxi, you really have to get a taxi. Um, and he'd have to, oh, and the wait was an hour and a half in the car. So Imagine we're like, okay, that awkwardness. That, that's not feasible. Um, and we said, oh, we might come back at like midnight when it's quicker. And she's like, no, she's like, I'd seriously recommend you come as soon as possible because um, there's a 24 to 48 hours wait for your results um, and your flight Sunday morning. So we're like, oh shit. Um, so we got on to Bex and Darren who were gonna be going out with. Um, Darren, of course, and um, the King of Dubai <laughs> gave his lovely voice message, really reassuring, and just said, "It's grand. I know someone who can come to your apartment and get a result within six hours." So that was grand. That was that stress gone from Friday night. So then on Saturday, it was actually really convenient service. Uh, we got um, someone over to um, our apartment, did the test for us. I actually have a video of this. I need to actually show you this because it was the best thing I have ever seen. I was so entertained by it. So basically they come to your apartment, like Connor said, and they do the test. So I don't know, will you be able to see this? So this is uh, just Connor getting uh, his uh, inspection done up the nostril, you know? Yeah, good stuff. So uh, Connor got that sorted. I was highly entertained. We both got it done and we felt right. Happy days, we can go and enjoy the rest of the day. 12 o'clock at night, we were finishing packing. Connor was like, no COVID test yet, so I text him. And it was meant to be like six hours because um, we paid like extra for it or whatever. So I was like, oh, I, so I messaged them and they're like, oh, don't worry, it'll be in by like 1 a.m. the latest. So perfect. We woke up anyway at four to be in the airport for five. Connor's first thing he said to me was, is there an email for the COVID test? And there wasn't. So I was like, oh Jesus Christ. We were in a frantic rush because we had to get everything together. We had obviously accumulated a lot of stuff for being there for two months. So we had to get everything out of the apartment and we were kind of starting to sweat, but I kind of tried to keep my cool, didn't I? Mm. I was trying to keep my cool. We, we, like we still had to just go and pretend like we had them. I almost <laughs> started like texting and trying to find out about it, but we didn't have time to wait. So I had to go to the airport anyway. So we got to the airport with no COVID test, <laughs> not feeling the best. Um, and we were in the queue, and like we went two hours before our flight, so we thought we had, we had loads of time. I don't know where we like in the queue, and we didn't even realize for a period of time. But all of a sudden, your one uh, goes, um, "Anyone Dublin, Ireland, Dublin, Ireland?" And we're like, "Yeah." And she's like, "Oh, <laughs> skip the queue, last call. Like you need to be going now." And we're like, "Oh shit!" No, we honestly started. You know that like that cold sweat. Like I'm not joking. Like I like I was <laughs> sweating. I could see Connor's face was red, and I was like, "Where?" fucked so went up to the queue anyway and the guy like i thought i'd be able to get away with this connor literally was just like he didn't know how yeah, to so do he, it he's like passports and we're like yeah <laughs> and he's like covid test and we're like and <laughs> um, well actually like we we have a receipt for them if that works <laughs> uh yeah so like we knew that was never happening like so he's like nah. he literally looked at us 
dead cold in the face and he was like you don't have a test and we were I was like, like we're, we're waiting on it but like we have our seat we did get them done and then um, we were like one of those people you know one of those customers that you really don't want like it's early in the morning like we were those people and i honestly was so annoyed that i was that person yeah and he just he just said wait until you get your results just wait over there so we weren't being allowed on so we we're like oh shit and um, so we were like frantic texting and stuff and i'd say like people looking at us were like those they like, probably thought we didn't get the test done and we're like we actually did and this is not our fault but um no, yeah we were so sweating they were really mean it I eventually mean it. someone ca- got awake uh who was part of the lab and um, they actually had to get a driver to collect someone who worked in the lab to drive in to print us off the sheets because they forgot about it but bear in um, mind when this was happening when all that was happening so i couldn't even talk to connor because he was sweating so much right i was frantic i was pacing and the woman literally came up to us and was like, you have five minutes. Mm. I was like, oh my God. So bear in mind, we were working under severe time pressure. They'd already checked us in because your man still took our passports. Uh, but because we checked in, it would mean we'd have to reschedule the whole flight, which was an absolute nightmare. So we were screwed. So we were, so how bad were we? We yeah. were frantic. Like and then we, uh, <laughs> at one stage we thought she was like laying us forward. She, <laughs> I don't think she like felt bad for us because she was like, come, come forward, come forward. Kay like turned to me and she's like, thank God, thank God. And we're like, oh, thank God. <laughs> and then we move forward with the bags like ready, like yeah, here. And she's like, no, no, back, back. You need a test result. And we're like, what? So she like got her hopes up for no reason. Uh, eventually they ended up coming in and she's oh. literally like one minute, like the supervisor was over the person who was checking us in. It was like that late. And they're like, come on, get it through. And Kate's was true at this stage. Mine actually was still, coming through but there's a bit of delay sweat, there sweat sweat you've no idea like and, the, the, and then they're like oh your bags are um <laughs> overweight and we're like oh and we're like hey how much here like just give hand them the money really like, throwing we, we money have and they're like oh no you actually have to pay for the overpaid baggage down at the other desk and i was like yeah but you said there's one minute so just take my money please we were like and throwing it at the person and they're like the security guard will usher you down to that desk so you can pay for it but you must run because your gate's very far away and we're like okay <laughs> Um, so then went down to the security guard, he paid for extra baggage, and then he said, I, I, Kay This ma- was so weird. Kay thought he was going to usher us through to get to the gate in time. He so made like, it that, sound like he was going to do like, that. So that's grand, he might have one of those like buggy things, and we step on the back and we just boom it up. So I was like, oh, this will be stress free. And he's like, okay, so tell everyone that the security said you can skip the queue and just keep, keep running through them all. And we're like, okay. So um, wait a we were those guys. That were annoying when you go to the airport first, and we were then those annoying people that were like, "Excuse me, sorry, sorry, I'm actually late." Like, how would not like those people drive me crazy? And we were those people. Uh, like, oh, it was just the worst thing ever. Yeah. But we got through it. But we didn't realize how far the gate was. Mm. Honestly, this this is like no exaggeration now. So if you were from Cork, it's almost like a run. <laughs> like, how? Where would you even put it? From like Cork to like the fucking Mardyke, that's what I felt like. Cork City, City Hall to the Mardyke is what it felt like. It was like, honestly, about a 20 minute, we were running as well. Mm. So it was a 20 minute run with bags. We were like psychopaths running through the running through the airport. Didn't know where we were going. She wasn't lying when she said it was far because mm. I honestly, I've never, like I can laugh about it now. But when we got there, Connor was so, so red. He was yeah. dripping, like, as in, like, proper. Like, we just had showers. We're all fresh for the long flight. We are actually horrendous, the two of us. I, as you know, I like to wear makeup. I had none left on my face. There was nothing. I was, we were both, like, just an absolute state. Got to the gate, anyway, eventually got there. Connor had time to actually go over and get water. I couldn't believe it. We were the last ones on, and the guy said, Oh, do you have this form filled out? And we were like, Yeah, and then what? We, and then we didn't have the form filled out. And he's like, Okay, well, go to this, type in this link. And we on our phones, we were like typing in the link. And we're like, oh. But we were so, we were so stressed out. We were like, Oh my god, quick! Yeah, frantic. We got on the flight though, and I think we just both like nearly yeah, fell into both the our, seat. Both our heads dropped, and we we're just like, We can't speak for like. I honestly, I did not think we were getting on that flight. I've never experienced stress like it in my life. I'm usually quite a calm person but honestly like I was extremely I'm stressed I'm stressed talking about it like I can laugh about it now but I, I can tell you now it was not funny when we were there we thought we were going to be like stranded in Dubai genuinely and with the with the hotel quarantine coming in imagine like I couldn't think of anything worse but we made it home and we're safe 
and we hopefully will never have to ever experience anything like that again but I honestly probably would enjoy seeing Connor sweat like that I actually kind of secretly enjoy that it's good. So being home, one thing I actually did really miss was all my things. Connor definitely didn't care if he didn't see his things again or not, but I definitely missed all my things and I didn't realize I missed them until I came home. So I'm actually currently in our main living room and I don't think I've ever showed you this before. Um, so I'm just gonna give you a quick run through. Um, again, like a huge thing for me, if you don't know, is candles and flares, so you'll see lots of them everywhere. So this is our kitchen space. As you can see, Chef Connor there is uh, working away. Um, our our dining table, which is where we actually work quite a bit. Um, similar to when we were away, as you see, like we kind of dictate to each other across the table uh, all day long. And uh, so we're here for majority of the day and a big thing for me when you're working is a bright space. So I really appreciate the light in this apartment and a good scent. So I will have candles lighting at 7 a.m. and Connor is like, do you seriously need to be lighting candles at this hour of the morning? I'm like, yes, I do. So uh, the living room, again, we actually don't really get to spend much time here. To be honest, we don't really watch much TV unless it is a new thing we're watching at the moment. Actually, there's like a nine series of it is Suits. So I don't know, have you watched it? But if you haven't, you need to get on it. It's an easy watch, we absolutely love it. I don't know how we only found it now. But yeah, this is our sitting room. Really love this space as well. Nice and bright and yeah, more candles and flowers. So yeah, that is pretty much it. That's just our main space that we are kind of in every day. And it's where we do our check-ins as well. Remember, if you saw in the last video, I talked about bright natural light, like this is the perfect place for it. Okay, so as you would have also seen from one of our very first videos, I've talked a lot about uh, our meal prep. So as you know, myself and Connor both get our food cooked and prepared by one of our very close friends, Mikey Olden. On Instagram, his business name is Mikey Olden Meals and he is absolutely incredible at what he does. To have full trust in someone to cook your meals takes a lot, especially for both of us, um, but he is truly gifted and I think for me, um, I definitely missed it while I was away, to be honest. So that was one thing that got us home, to be honest. Uh, but I'm lucky enough to have Mikey with us today. What's happening? How are we? And Mikey's going to talk us through uh, some food because a lot of things at the moment, like when, when people are dating, you see it as well, like chicken and rice, it can be a bit dodgy, do you know? So Mikey's going to teach us how to make it tasty. Yeah, like, you know, I see a lot of food prep, I see a lot of food plans and stuff and I see a lot of people putting up pictures on Instagram of their food that they're prepping and to be honest there's so much simpler ways to make it taste good and to look out a lot better. Um, so I'm just going to go through like a quick kind of Nando style chicken and rice dish today. So butterfly chicken, peri season, some uh, Spanish rice and then some green beans to go with it. And just show how simple it is to actually cook good food when you're on plan. And it doesn't actually take that much effort, or does it? Not at all. To be honest, I let the oven do most of my work for me because it's just cutting out that fact and you have consistency across the board as well. Yes. So basically, I get all my vegetables and stuff in English Market as well. These are organically, gr locally grown green beans. I just like that, like, you know, you can use Aldi runs and all that kind of stuff as well, but I just enjoy food, that I enjoy my food, so that's why I get these. I'm just taking the tops and the tails off both of them just because, again, I just don't like the consistency and stuff of them. Um, and literally, I'm just going to boil them for two, three minutes later. Um, I like a crunch to my green beans. Do you know, I don't like when they go too soggy and stuff, so literally, it'll be done in a few seconds. Like, and you want a bit of a crunch to greens because, like, it's a texture. Like, food's all about texture, it's all about flavour, it's all about smell, it's all about looking stuff. So you yeah. want things with different textures and stuff. If soft rice and stuff, a crunchy bean to go with it and stuff, makes it so much easier. So it's like umami, like the seven senses, like, do you know what yeah. I mean? So, like, you want the texture, you want smell, you want look, you want taste. All of them together makes food better, like, you know what I mean? 100%. Our kettle's like broken as well, <laughs> um, so we have to turn it off ourselves or like start to explode. So when it, when it like boils and boils and it's about to turn off, it just doesn't turn off. And it's like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, it actually, because the other day we were sitting down here, you know, and <laughs> we had the kettle going, and Connor said, turn off the kettle. We ran in, there's this like steam everywhere, so we have to like babysit the kettle when it's on. So when I'm cooking rice, I'll weigh it raw always and I'm literally just gonna like so say the rice is up to here on the thing and then I'll double that and then when the water's gone from your pot then that means your rice is done. So one question I get asked loads and stuff as well is how to butterfly chicken right so this is free range chicken from the English market 200 grams right so basically all I'm doing to butterfly is I'm coming here with the knife and I'm coming down it, right? 
can I have to touch the chicken a bit like that? That's all good. And then, so do you know when you go to Nando's and you go to Roosters and stuff, they say you're getting two chicken breasts, you're not, you're only getting one. So like, that's just chicken butterfly, straight up. Nice. So as I said earlier, I'm gonna do my chicken in the oven, right? By doing the chicken in the oven, I don't need to add any excess oil, I don't need to add any more sprays, any of that kind of sort of things. So I'm literally just gonna transfer onto an oven tray, laying the parchment paper, and this is just simple peri-peri spice. So I kind of like things spicy, like so I kind of go a bit heavy on the spice. And I'll spice both sides. And now I'm basically putting that into the oven for about 15 minutes, preheated to 180. Um, always preheat your oven because if you don't preheat your oven, your oven's not going to be hot when the food goes in. So you're taking five minutes off your cooking time. So that's So, as I said, I'm just going to make my rice Mexican. I've just put on the rice as normal, right? And what I've got here is a mix of spices, just kind of all Mexican style spices. So, if you're doing it at home, use a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of cumin, a teaspoon of oregano, a teaspoon of ground coriander, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, salt, pepper, and a whole lot of love. So I'm just gonna put like two teaspoons of this into the water and it'll turn the rice starting to go a little bit red. Teaspoon Yeah. Yeah. So you can even see by the color of the water already that like that's gonna change the rice's color. And again, it just adds visual to your rice. Like so, when things look nicer, they're gonna taste nicer immediately in your head before you even eat it. So literally, all I'm gonna do here, as I said earlier, I'm just gonna serve this with green beans. Um, I like to crunch to my green beans. So my chicken's been in the oven about eight minutes. My rice has been on like five, six. Um, so I just gotta throw these in for two, three, and then job done. So again, just into a pot of water. And that's it. The fresh herb, and you can get it anywhere, like Tesco, Ali, all that kind of sort of thing. And just by chopping it a little bit through, um, and adding it through your rice fresh, it's just again another zingy taste, another different fresh taste through it. And it's like, for a 10 second step there, it's gonna make your rice taste a lot better. So literally just rough chopped. So it's just oh, fragrant and stuff like. Jesus. And it's the exact same as cooking rice, but that looks so doesn't take long. I'll wait till the chicken is ready and then I'll add the spice to it. To the spice. Quick question, so how much does it take to, like, how much would it cost to put a meal like that together? So, like, like I got everything for this in the English market, like, I got everything, and, like, chicken fillet was, like, 120, spice rub, like, probably a euro, um, green beans, a couple of cent, like, do you know what I mean? And rice, you know how cheap rice is, like, you can get that anywhere. So, like, this proportion now is probably less than two euro a portion, like, it's crazy. Um, so it's yeah. cost effective. It's cost effective, it's time effective by using the oven as well. And it's taking out the work as well, you know what I mean? You're taking out the work in it. The oven is doing your chicken for you, so you have no way of burning the chicken possible. Even if you didn't want to cook rice, you could probably use microwave rice if it fitted your macros and stuff like that. Like, do you know what I mean? By doing the exact same thing, just adding the spice into a bit of water and cooking it out for a little minute or two. And um, I suppose with your spices as well, you should always have your cupboard at home filled with spices, especially if you're on plan and you're on prep, because like, Spice adds flavor to food and like, you can have the same meal every day, right? And it might be boring, but you can add a different spice to it every day, so it's changing that meal every day for you and for your head. Because a big thing with your food is, with your head if you get me like, I don't know how to make that sense. And yeah, just getting creative right, like, with it. 100% like, and like, I have loads of different recipes and stuff on my Instagram page, and if there's anything on it, if you are in prep or anything, text me and I'll send you out a recipe. Like, you know what I mean? I have no worries at all about that. If you need cooking tips, that kind of thing, drop me a message, I'll get it back to you with it as well. And that's why, He's the absolute king. <laughs> that rice looks very, very good. Like. It looks so good. Mm. Um, so when do you add the coriander then? So I basically, literally just before plating, like, so like, the rice is done. Um, by only adding enough water, so like, as you've seen, I, I fill the rice to say one point, and then I double the quantity of rice with water, and by doing that, I don't have to strain that rice. So like, basically I know by when the water cooks down fully, my rice is done. So like it, just, it takes out the thing of straining it and burning yourself with water and you're throwing it out. Never add too much water to rice when you're cooking it. So like literally, say if my rice is up to say X label or whatever, I'll double out with water and like I've cooked the rice now and there's not one bit of water left in the bowl. So like you don't need to strain your rice. You know what I mean? It adds, it just makes it so much nicer and more flavorsome as well. 
and all the nutrients still inside the rice. Like. I burnt mine down in my rice before. You know, yeah. the water completely goes and it starts to like smell a burn. Smell a burn. That's just time, like. But I look, see that pan there now. I have no water, and there's not one yeah. burn on the bottom of the pan. And um, probably because I cook a lot of rice every week, like, um, like I have pots there in the kitchen. I'll show you the next time you're up, um, and like you can like 50 liter pot, like, so like the pots, like, right. I could jump inside the pot, like, and it's just rice. Yeah, but like you just know right. exactly how to do it. Connor, um, Connor used to bulk, bulk cook, didn't you? That's that's the biggest bulk cook ever. Like he he used to just do all his chicken and then like all his rice and everything together, mm. didn't you? But you could do it this way with the oven and stuff. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? As in like you see the chicken and it comes out of the oven. I have not used one bit of oil on it. Like, you know, I never have to use oil in any of my cooking because even the vegetables I do and stuff, all that's done in the oven as well. Mm. It just cuts out that oil and stuff. Oven, like when you roast things, you add flavor to something. Like, do you know what I mean? And by adding flavor to it, it just makes it so much more tastier. Like, it brings out the natural sweetness and the natural flavor of the vegetables slash meat or whatever mm. and stuff without drenching it in oil, without burning pans and smoke everywhere and stuff. And like it's absolutely perfect for someone on prep, like there's nothing added, literally nothing, so. Just spices, like, yeah. so calories and spices? Uh, bit, no, bit, bit, bit. Not much. It depends on what kind of space you're taking. Yeah. I, th I think from a coaching perspective for us, the uh, main reason we thought this video would be helpful is because we do get clients, particularly when they've just started on a plan for the first few weeks, um, and they'll say like, oh, like is the meal plan changing, getting a bit sick of this food, and as Mikey kind of touched on, you actually don't need to change the food, you maybe just need to change the way you're cooking it, the way you're seasoning it, and things like that, and usually that's the advice we give, and it's just saying like change around your seasonings, they'll come back the next week and they'll say, wow, uh, try to say with the meal and I actually love it. So sometimes it's just putting that bit of effort in um, and hopefully this kind of video shows you just how easy it is to put in that bit of effort to make a huge difference to your meal plan. And I think at the end of the day, like you want to be excited for the meal. Like you want to look forward to the meal and be like, oh yes, like it's my chicken meal less. Yeah, chicken and rice can sound bland if you want it to be bland. So top tips here, like honestly, I couldn't, I don't understand how you couldn't not like this, I can't wait to try it. And I think it actually goes for people in both a dieting phase and a building phase because I think when people are dieting, they do put a lot of effort into their food because it's precious to them and they know they're quite hungry. But what we do tend to see happen is when people are eating a lot of food and they're on a lot of calories, they just don't really care about it. So they're even more inclined just to throw everything together. And then you'll have them saying, oh, my appetite's really poor and um, really don't feel like eating my food anymore. But if you took some kind of tips on board, adding a bit more veg to the meals, adding seasoning to the meals, maybe how you're cutting the food. So if you're having a lot of chicken throughout the day, if you're butterflying the ch chicken like Mikey's doing now, now all of a sudden your appetite, appetite's firing again, you're getting in more calories, etc. So it works actually in both ways, both for fat loss and mm. gaining size. It's true though, taste is everything, isn't it? 100%. Even without even taste, it's kind of visuals of something like, you know, if I'm going to eat something and I see it first and it looks good for me, like already in my head I'm thinking it's good. Mm. Already in yeah. my head I'm like, I can't wait to eat this. If it doesn't look nice in the bed, I'm like, I don't want to eat this. Like, <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's making making your food somewhat way visual will help you eating it and stuff as well. Like, and as Connor was saying there, like, I'm on a gaining phase at the moment. Like, I'm on 5,600 calories a day and a free meal twice a week. Um, and like, it's hard. Like, I'm fun size. Like, it's hard for me to get that much food in. <laughs> so like, how are you getting that food in? And how I constantly get that food in is by changing up my meals the whole time. So say if I have potatoes in my meal. So if I have potatoes in my meal there, say four or five days at a week, like one day it'll be a mash, one day it'll be a roast potato, one day it'll be chips, you know what I mean? And I can constantly change it and constantly add, make different ways of making potatoes. And like, I'm loving the game phase at the moment. It's the best thing ever. Uh, so like, I just keep eating and keep eating and my weight keeps going up. So I'm happy out, like. And again, you haven't changed the food. You're just being smart with how you cook it. 100%. I'm not drowning about oil. I'm not eating any bad foods, any that kind of side of things and stuff. I'm just cooking simple and cooking good, like, and it just makes it so much easier to get the food into me, like. I'm just going to strain the green beans. They've been cooking for like two, three minutes. Probably forgot about five minutes. <laughs> but like, yeah. So I'm just going to strain them off, like. Um, really, really simple. I'm not really going to spice these. I'll probably add a bit of like five grams of Himalayan sea salt or normal salt or something just to get my salt intake into my dish as well. And um, because you don't really, there's enough spice and enough seasoning on the rest of the meal that you don't really need to add it to the greens. It's just there for a crunch and stuff. And again, you can throw salt on it. Um, so while that's happening as well, my rice is cooked, I'm going to add my coriander to my rice. So basically, I just rough chopped this. You can add as little as much as you want. Again, the green colour going through my rice, so it's red rice, green colour. It's just, again, visuals. Do you know what I mean? And it's adding something fresh and flavoursome through it. So like, Spanish rice with coriander. Literally took like five, six minutes. Is the chicken done is the question, wasn't it? <laughs> 
Here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> Are we good? We're good. So I just start plating up. Yeah. And then I can take the chicken out and plate. So, chicken done. You can see when you cook chicken in the oven as well, there's no extra oils or any bad things coming off it and stuff. It's just so much clean and so simple. Like a bit of parchment paper down there with my tray is spotless underneath it too, you know what I mean? It's not, there's no clean up or nothing to it as well. It's a genius way of cooking. Like, So, I've got my bowl. I suppose I'll start off. Some Mexican rice. Again, you can see the colours and stuff in the rice. Just a bit of greens. Job done. So Mikey's been cooking my meals for a long time, right? But he actually hates when I ask him to burn my chicken. Don't do. Burn <laughs> chicken to me is a sin, like I just can't do it, like do you know what I mean? But like because it's gay I do it like and I don't mind doing it, but no one else gets burned chicken off me. I have to unfortunately traumatise him for that. We're gonna do the taste test, we actually already know. I'm kinda nervous about the taste test. Yeah, you, should be. Like. you should be nervous. Because it's usually not right there in front of them. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, yeah. I'm not usually not here when you're eating your food. I'm gonna leave you taste test and we'll be good. Okay, Mikey's never here when we taste, so if we hate it. <laughs> okay, taste you test. I'll go first. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, like this, if I got this in a restaurant, I'd be like, mm. It's just a bowl. I'm very impressed with the Mexican rice because I've only ever had, like, you know, like the Uncle Ben's microwave mm. kind of. That could be spicy, the Mexican rice as well, but again, just like go easy on the spice again if you want it less spicy, you know what I mean? Oh my god, the rice. The rice? Oh yeah. <laughs> really I'm like master chef. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Don't worry, you're just a master chef. This is like a cheap version of master chef. <laughs> okay, that's really good. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. The rice. Yeah, is it too so, spicy? No, it's so good. Mmm. Good. Sick. Yes. Mm. I actually feel very lucky that we get to have my key make our meals every day. Anyway. That's really good. Yeah. That is sick. So, so good. So good. Exactly. So I hope everyone enjoyed that video. Um, so as you see, it was a really, really easy, convenient way to make just a simple chicken and rice meal, which could be quite disgusting, actually really, really tasty. So thanks a million, Mikey. And if they want to get in touch with you. Yeah, so if you want to get in touch about any recipes, tips, and that kind of stuff, or meal prep, uh, just contact me on Instagram, at Mikey Olden, and on my business page is Mikey Olden Meals. Um, just drop me a message and I'll get back to you, any inquiries and stuff. Thank you for watching. Thank you.